Hello and welcome to the VR Untethered podcast where we like to be untethered from absolutely everything, including our memories. Uh, what did I just say? I don't remember. <laughs> I'm not Brad, that's not Josh, but I'm Josh and that is Brad. And neither of us are famous yet. But, but you can help us become famous if you like and subscribe and tell all your friends all about us. Wow, that's the first time you ever started the show with that. <laughs> Usually they've left already. I know. I will, I will probably also end the show with it, with our usual, you know, knock him out, drag him to the keyboard sort of thing. But, you know. <laughs> I, I like it. It's a good beginning. Maybe we'll get another one or two people. <laughs> Maybe. So, welcome to another edition of News and Views and we News. Or something? Okay. Sometimes so, news. let's start off with the highlights. If anybody has any highlights, raise their hand. <laughs> Ooh, you're mean. You really are cruel today, Josh. I gotta say. Um, uh, I know you've been under the weather this week, so. Yeah, it's been a rough week. I've been really unable to move, so it's really, really rough when you have VR. Well, that's the perfect time for VR, except for... A, VR activities that make you move, obviously. <laughs> I know. It's the perfect time for things like gloomy eyes or paper birds or things where you're not actually moving. You're just sitting there and experiencing them. True. It'll help. You know, it helps, uh, help take your mind off of things. Yes. There. According to all the stuff we've been spouting, it helps yeah. remove pain and all the yeah. other things. So, but. Yeah, I couldn't bend down to get it. It was causing too much pain, so it was. Yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, hopefully I'll be able to jump back in this week. There's a lot of things I yeah. wanted to do. Some new games I picked up that I really do want to play. And um, yep. Speaking of which, and we will discuss it more later. But uh, did, did you grab grab abduction? Uh, I already have abduction on my okay. Steam account. I had paid for it nice. many, many years ago. Uh, many, <laughs> yeah, many, it is an older game, but yeah. <laughs> it's really old. That, that was literally, I think, the third game I purchased when I got my Vive. So we have to be going back four years ago, maybe more. Uh, at least three, I know that, because right. I know VR Gamer Dude had a video three years ago about it and he's it's, it's sitting there with an xbox controller and the rift with the magic or w- 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 with the deep motions taped on the front of it <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it was really there in the early days so and it was very complicated but back then you were also wired remember there was no wireless connection right. so moving around which you have to do in there gets right. to be really complicated because you're juggling this tether this giant cable right. that you got locked yeah. together. and yeah. it wasn't a small cable like a link cable you know i mean what's right. it was that big yeah <laughs> so. all right well um i had a couple highlights um i got to play abduction last night uh because and we'll as i mentioned get into it more later um but let's just say that it's currently free on the Epic Store. I grabbed it last night. I played it, made some some progress. That's one I've always wanted to play because it's made by the makers of Mist and Riven, mm-hmm. and Mist, <laughs> Mist VR. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> right? I know. I know. Yeah. It still yeah. doesn't have a notebook. Still doesn't. And they are working on an upcoming game called Firmament that uh, I backed on. To Kickstarter, so I get updates every now and then. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I also completed the Seeking Vengeance mission in Sniper Elite with three stars. Congratulations. Does that mean that I completed the mission, I got over 2,500 points, and I wasn't spotted once? Whoa. Did you play it on easy? No, on normal. Wow, that's great. So it took me a lot longer than the approximately half hour that is the recorded time, but that's because the time recording starts over every time you re- you have to reload a checkpoint. 
<laughs> so it, and yeah, it only took me more like two to three hours of trying. Yeah, no, I was well, bound and determined to have a stealth playthrough where I wasn't spotted and I didn't have to, you know, I never got cover blown. Right. I, I read so many things from so many people that are talking about the bugs that they found in it and disappearing walls or backing into walls. And there are a few of those, yeah, and so they're working on them. I mean, they already had a bug fix out for a, a lot of bugs already, so I'm I'm sure those will all get, get ironed out right. as it goes on. Right now, uh, yeah. sort of waiting for the next one where people start saying, wow, this is perfect, you know, where they get a few more of those bugs done because there's just still a few too yeah. many people that are experiencing that. Yeah, so. but um, but overall, I am still enjoying it. It's you know, a fun game. It, yeah, it's got some bugs, and it's honestly not terribly realistic in the snapping mechanics because I seriously doubt that in real life I'd be that good. Yeah, sniping. <laughs> well, you really don't want them making you have to be that good at sniping. Right. But the game. There's a lot of assisting that goes on. That's fine. But, but it's a game that wants you to feel, I'm an elite sniper. I can get those 400 meter shots. You know? So, yeah, they got some assisting going on. And Honestly, it's claim to fame. It's a kill cam. Right. So <laughs> you can see the bullet going through the internal organs of the person. Which at 400 meters is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, but seriously, that is what the game is for. Yeah. It's, it's to enjoy the, the kill factor and to give you the feeling that you've grown from, you know, a beginning right. sniper to the sniper elite. So, you know, right. it's, and people do say it's a much harder game than you know they claim it to be and yeah. um you know uh, but it does seem to have a lot of promise and most people do seem to have fun with it that's the bottom yeah. line yeah, yeah. Having, which is, so that the bottom line of any game is can you have fun with it exactly you know, even if the fun that you have is making fun of it while you play it exactly <laughs> there are some games that that's how you have fun with them <laughs> I think uh, Sam and Max is going to be one of those. But, uh... <laughs> All right. So moving on, we have some new releases. Uh, we have Noda, which is free. Uh, that's a mind mapping software. Um, it has to chart out the connection between ideas, concepts, words, and phrases, images, that exist only in your head and put them out in front of you in some sort of so physical way so you can I think the biggest use of it is for brainstorming really of you course know, helping organize your your uh, thoughts while you are brainstorming so which is excellent. Because you can see, oh, hey, that's related to that. I didn't think about that, which is related. Oh, here's what I can do right here. The intersection of those three ideas, you know, so. Right. And for something like that, most people do not think along those lines. I don't know if any of us do, other than, you know, in our own minds, conceptually in different areas. But this, right. like, gives you the ability to step outside of your own mind. It's sort of a scientific um, thing that Dumbledore had where he was able to take his thoughts out and the pensive. into the pensive. Yeah. You know, this is sort of a pensive. But, you know, way, yeah. you know, so it's as close as we're coming without getting our letter that we've been accepted to Hogwarts. So let's just... Yeah. And you're not actually literally pulling out a memory. If you are, you're doing it wrong. I've always wondered, if they actually pulled out a memory, how would they remember to put that memory back because they would look at that and go that's not my memory they would have to stick their face in and actually drop back down depending on which version <laughs> and, and fall into that memory again right? yeah <laughs> so, um but yeah it's it is free there is a paid subscription i believe to um to unlock premium which is more unlimited stuff more environments and all that stuff so um but for, for most people i'm thinking probably the 
free version will be plenty. Right. Yeah. And if it's not enough, then you know that you have something going for you that's going to help yeah. in whatever you're doing. Yeah. It gets yep. you a, help create a business, create, you know, problem solving, things like that, if you really yeah. want to take it to that level. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, as I believe I've mentioned before, I was first introduced to this uh, concept way back in the 90s um, in my creative writing class, and it was called clustering, mm -hmm. which is basically where you're drawn on paper, a mind map that helps flow right into writing right about something right it was just but it was circles connected by lines yeah, you know, yeah. exactly and yeah. Yeah, it's you the same start with the concept in the middle right. you know and then to branch out okay that okay that ooh, ooh, over here this okay over here oh okay i know and and then you start writing but so. now you could do it in three dimensions and you can yeah. look back at it not just yeah you know it's different i like i yeah. like the concept i do yeah, so, and moving on, we have a Township Tale, which is a completely boring game, so moving on, no. <laughs> um, it's one of, I think, probably the most hyped of the new releases that we have this week. Um, and from all that I've heard, it's fun. It's got a few bugs, you know, like um, I think Michael said uh, he was exploring in the mines or the caves with uh, someone else, and the other person all of a sudden turned in, turned invisible. And they were they the one wearing the torch. Yes. So the uh, torch was invisible also. <laughs> which is not a good position to be in in a mine. It's sort of yeah. being up a certain creek without any sort of assisting paddle. So, um, yeah, yeah, not good. Yeah, okay. so it's got a few bugs, and it's not necessarily always made clear in most of the videos that you have to go through the the tutorial before you can join a server. So that's mandatory. You can't skip the tutorial and jump right in. You have to go through the tutorial, and you have to create an account because it's an MMO, even though it's not calling itself an an MMO. It's an MMO, you know, it, um, of sorts. It's not a massively one, but it's a multiplayer, you know, online. <laughs> it's an right. MMO. It's, it's right. An MMO. It, it's an a, MMO. Mini, a mini MMO. A mini MMO. Yeah. A mini <laughs> A mini mode. <laughs> because there's only a limited number of people that can be on a server, I think. Right. So it's not a massively multiplayer. Exactly. Right. It's a multiplayer online game. Right. They just so. have to, they can't call it that because they just don't want people going, hey, this is in a massive. Well, yeah. They, uh, yeah, I mean, technically it's not an MMO because it's not massively multiplayer. Minimal. But it's the same kind of game, and those games do tend to require that you make an account you know? understandable so um so you need to go through the tutorial you need to make an account the tutorial can be bugged as well i i i have heard <laughs> and so also, if it is bugged just close the game reopen it see if that fixes it yeah, uh, yeah. a lot of the times it does so um by the way, every time I load up a new game, especially after there, we have no idea which pieces of patches they're loading up into the system that they're loading into our, when we have no idea when they're doing that either. But since we don't know, every time I load a new game, as opposed to just jumping in, I restart the headset because... Yeah, yeah. Is, I mean, really, that's not a bad idea. It's a pain in the butt, but it's not a bad idea. Yeah. So anyways, High Township Tale, now that we've talked about some of the stuff about it, is a game of crafting where you com communitively <laughs> Communitively? <laughs> as opposed to communicably. <laughs> In a community-oriented fashion, <laughs> a cooperative, yes. uh, you are kind of rebuilding a town, rebuilding the area around the town, opening up new areas by constructing bridges and whatnot. And, you know, um, it's kind of a survival game in that aspect, but it's a collaborative survival game. And I believe that there are 
monsters, but you're not necessarily required to fight those because it's a collaborative game. If you want to stay in the town and be the village blacksmith, you can do that. Other people on the server can go out and fight the monsters. Right. You know, so. It's, well, that's just it. The whole idea is it's a township tale. You're all working <laughs> together to keep this town right. growing and building it together. Right. So, yes. And you have specialties within that town, which is what makes it very reminiscent of an MMORPG. But, you know, right. we're not seeing that. So it's like, right. you know. You know, we're going to play these games, but yeah, yeah I mean, it it works like an like an MMORPG, but because it's limited on how many people on a server, it's just lacking that extra M. Right, and you know something, honestly, when you're in VR and you're playing with friends, it, it it's fine. You know, yeah. you don't you don't necessarily need a server that's going to host 20, 30, 40, 50 right. people. To be able to right. build this town, being able to hang out with a few friends and be able to work it is fine. Right. So. Right. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and it's at a really cheap price too. I mean, it's it's only ten dollars. Oh uh, no, I got it for nine because I pre-ordered it. Oh well, okay. Well, I didn't. So, for, for those who did not pre-order it, it is only ten dollars. Uh, that's true. Well, it is as of this recording. We don't. <laughs> yes. Know. Tomorrow brings. <laughs> it is as of the day that we are recording it as well. <laughs> so, so, um, anyway, so it, uh, tale, yeah, it looks good. I'm gonna yeah. play. I mean, it doesn't look like the most graphically gorgeous game, and it doesn't. No. And it's one that I personally am not necessarily terribly interested in. The only time I would sit, to be playing it is when we have a community event or whatever, you know. So. Right, exactly. It's not something I should, should just jump in my, on my own and do a random, hey, I'll join your server today, or, you know. So. Right, exactly. It's the type of thing where you have to have a community that you're going to yeah. join in occasionally yeah. or whatever yeah. your life calls for. Yeah. So, anyways, moving on to totally baseball, dude. Oh, man, what's with baseball this week? Oh, my God, all of a yeah. sudden, two games appear. Yeah, uh, one in the App Lab, one in the main store. Um, the main it's store totally piece. baseball. Um, this looks like a full-fledged baseball game. You, you you get a pitch and you get a bat, you know, and, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it's, baseball. It's very simplistic graphics. You know, it's not like... Uh, one of those ultra realistic MLB uh, baseball games that you get on the PlayStation or the Xbox or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Not, nothing like that, but no. But um, it it looks it's fine. Um, I watched a sh short little video of just someone narrating like he was a, a sportscaster going over it. <laughs> of course. Bit of overkill, bit of overkill but okay. <laughs> <laughs> and what yeah, about MLB? What? And, and what about the the actual Major League Baseball symbol on the MLB game? It's like, <laughs> what are they thinking, and what are they going to do with that app? You know, yeah. I am. Yeah. So in the App Lab, another app came out called Home Run Derby, which had the MLB logo on it. <laughs> <laughs> What? I, you know, I guess so, they've become untethered from reality. They're following our lead, Josh. You know, everybody's maybe. untethering from reality. At this Never point. know. Maybe, yeah. I mean, no. But yeah, it's um, not, I think it's not a full fledged one like the other one is. This is a more limited um, type of experience. No, because it's based on the Homer and Derby thing, which isn't a full-fledged baseball game with, with innings and everything. So, right. Um, Interesting. They should both come out the same week, though. Well, yeah, it, yeah, <laughs> that was kind of interesting. Yes, yeah, so it's like, hmm, and why is it that the MLB one is one that's in App Lab? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> and why is it that Larsenot is still being compared to Solaris in the early days? Um, I don't know. Me neither. Good question. I, they promised a quick fix, and um, it does not seem to be happening. Right. Hmm. And um, seeing more and more complaints as opposed to more and more acceptance. So mm, That's not good. Nah, and that's the problem because Larsenots is going to be the type of game where if you don't have a base, you have no game. Right. So, you know, I just, I don't get it. I, you know, sometimes I just don't understand why we wait forever for certain games only for them to come out still having bugs as opposed right. to. Yeah, I mean, that that seemed to be the way that it is, though, is... Um, even on PC and Xbox and PlayStation, you know. Um, oh, oh, are we talking about Cyberpunk 2077? Maybe one of the things we are talking about, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> that but was anyways, a- um, Home Run Derby, uh, the full title is MLB Home Run Derby VR with an exclamation point at the end. It yeah. also is only $10. And is hit home runs and rack up points in a timed home run competition. So basically, you are at bat and you are swinging for the fences. Right. I was going to say it sounds like a batting cage is compared yeah. to the other one. Yeah. But... The other one, they're totally baseball. That's more of a full fledged baseball game. And I mean, it's kind of strange that an, <laughs> an indie would come out with that and an MLB would just come out with a limited, you know, basically a batting cage. I, 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 you know, I don't know what to say. I really don't. It's, um... But yeah, Totally Baseball is, according to them, the only VR baseball game that lets you play the full sport of baseball throw a strike, but if the batter hits it to the outfield, boom, now you're in outfield order and have to run over and catch it. They'll be amazed at how realistic our throwing feels. We'll start with easy mode and the th- throwing assist at too high, get better over time, and play with less assistance for more of a challenge. So it's... Um, it sounds great. I guess I mean, seriously. you do all the roles. So it after you throw the pitch, I guess you, you you're at the batter, and then you jump to the outfield to set to catch your own ball. And uh, the only thing better well, would be well, has that multiplayer coming coming soon though? So it'll be interesting to see how multiplayer on that works. <laughs> wow, yeah, I guess you don't jump out of the pitching position into the outfield, or I don't know. That's kind of bizarre. I don't know. So, but I mean, so both of them are a little bit different take because I mean, it honestly it would be a little bit difficult and honestly boring in some respects to have a full eighteen people, you know, go on their heels. All right, am I going to get a bat this turn? Nope, they got three outs. Okay, yeah, right, right. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I get it. Well, they didn't say when when they said multiplayer. They didn't say eighteen. You know, multiplayer. No, no. I, I was saying how it is currently working. You know, it seemed kind of weird, but at the same time, it'd be really difficult to you know try to have a just a full team of real people. You know, because well, yeah, uh, that's, that's... most of the people would be just sitting there not doing anything, <laughs> like real baseball. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Chewing the gum. There you go. Like they say, totally baseball. <laughs> yep. So, but no. So both of them look interesting. If you want to do baseball in VR, um, totally baseball is fifteen. Uh, Home run derby is ten. Just pick your poison. You could buy both of them, and it's still less money than getting a hot dog at a baseball game. So true. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so, upcoming titles. We have 
first person tennis under review for the official Oculus store, and it's coming soon. Uh-oh. Well, 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 they hope to pass review soon, r- r- rather. It's not necessarily coming soon. They're hoping to pass review soon. Which means we have no clue. Yep. Um, it just means that at some point it will probably come. Um, th- this is a, a game that's been out on PC for a while, and they are doing a quest port, obviously. So That would be nice to have a real tennis game. I would enjoy that. Yeah. Um... Yuki Bullet Hell is coming out this uh-huh. Thursday uh-huh. on July 22nd. I know. Where you get a hold. I don't have a figurine here to hold. Dang it. I was going to hold a figurine. But so basically, you are holding a figurine and making a fly through the air, sh- shooting bullets and dodging bullets. Sounds a lot like shooty skies. Yeah, but it's not as wacky as that <laughs> okay but it still sounds a lot like it yeah um. yes um but this is basically combining the bullet hell games that we all know and love where you are top down and you're seeing your your airplane and you can move it all over like that and you have to avoid the enemy projectiles while you're shooting your own projectiles and getting massive upgrades so that soon the screen is just pulsing rapidly <laughs> because your boys and their boys and all the explosions and yeah yeah sounds great if you have epilepsy avoid this one um <laughs> <laughs> yes Probably a good idea. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> well, that's how it how it ends up. Is you know you're shooting out like a million bullets a second, and they're shooting well, a million bullets a I second. Know, I know, I know. <laughs> I was just thinking of the effect, and I'm thinking, yeah, I I wouldn't necessarily enjoy that, you know. I, and I didn't expect you to jump all the way over to Yuki right away before hitting some of the other less. Um, Okay, well, you bring him up. Well, you're the one that has the Trello board. You're going to make me go back in and look. Oh, man. Oh, my big news wasn't so much that Yuki was coming, so much as that Racket Ball and Oh, X. well, that's in the news. Oh, we were under upcoming titles. Oh, but you put Yuki not under upcoming titles. I did. No, you put it under Elements. No, I moved, well... I put it down under up, uh, upcoming titles as well. Uh, I, I, I just didn't move the card over. Welcome to behind the scenes. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, um. Anyway, you didn't refresh the board. That's what happened. So you didn't see the change. I'm. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, we can move on. Such a news now, which is Racket and X <laughs> uh, has a partnership with the the, the International Racquetball Federation, right? Uh, which is working on uh, or, or is an Olympic certified body, and there is a new VR Olympic category, but it's not necessarily official Olympics, as then you get a medal and everything. It's just more like chess and bowling, where they're there, but they don't necessarily get medals, you know. Oh. But uh, Racket NX is poised to possibly become you know, an Olympic and uh, adjacent <laughs> right, I know. Well, I can tell you that was that game literally ripped the arm out of my socket. If you really want to play that game well, you're going to be hurting. You better be icing yeah, I mean, up that shoulder. Like and... playing racquetball, honestly. Um, it, except so having to move around a lot more, you know, in that full circle. Right, you know? it's racquetball yeah. real easy, actually, and um, it's it, intense. It really yeah. is. So. I could easily see that being a VR sport, um, a, yeah. an Olympic VR yeah. sport. Like, and you deserve the medal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You really <laughs> should, because that one really does take the, the full effort. And if you don't have it and you're interested at all, 
get it and play it because it really is if you like racquetball you're gonna love this game yeah and it you know a well-designed game um and as i mentioned you know the very athletic game just like real racquetball is um if not more so yeah. right. <laughs> really 360 degrees and the ceiling and the ability for it to pick up speed and go through tesseracts and i right. mean yeah it's crazy it, it's yeah. a great game it yeah. really is yeah. so but um, you'll hurt <laughs> yeah yeah um if you but yeah i mean if there's any vr game that would make it to the olympics right now this is it's definitely one of them now, there's a, a couple others that I think could possibly be there, but it, not, you know, like um, like Echo Arena, th- th- that could be one, so possibly, you know. Right, but Echo Arena is definitely a VR game, which yeah. you use the mechanics of VR to right, exploit. Right, but you this. still get a lot of moving around in it, too. It's not quite as intense as, as racket and x but it's pretty intense oh right and I, i'm yeah. sure that there will it's be a, but... because you gotta hurl to the disc as hard as you can if you want to get maximum speed on it so right but racket and x is constant the, yeah all the motion is constant there is no holding back at any given right point. it's a full-fledged right. all-out sport you know? right so not that echo isn't I'm just saying, yeah. Like, you know, team yeah. play is never quite as intense as solo play. Right. Uh, hang on one second. Okay. Okay. Um, speaking of Olympics, Rec Room is bringing their version of the Olympics to Rec Room. You have to be level 30 to qualify to apply to maybe be one of the contestants and they're doing it in multiple games you know like stunt runner disc golf etc you know um and you will have to choose which of the rec room clubs you are representing so hufflepuff i I mean (laughs) gotcha um, uh, okay, but yeah, um, and then it's going to be like a sixty-four people, and then the best sixteen times of those sixty-four people, those so sixteen people are going to compete, and then that's narrowed down until we got the the top three in each category. So, um. If you are interested in that, details are on the Rec Room website and the Rec Room Discord on YouTube. So feel free and go and look that up. And remember, they also have full body costumes now. So it's not full body avatars, but it's full body costumes that you to click equip on, equip on, and it gives you arms and legs in the costume. Yeah. I know. Um, some of them obviously will be higher quality than others because um, some people don't put a lot of effort into making the costumes necessarily, and they go, "Here's a stick for a leg." <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, you know, it's, I guess it all depends on how you know hurry you are to manufacture the uh, yeah costume. But they are there, and they work. Uh, I tested them out. Uh, well, I, I tested one out in Rec Room yesterday. Um, and, yeah, it, they give the arms and leg that articulate mostly right. You know, so. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. One step closer to Rec Room VR chat collaboration. <laughs> I was going to say, it, it just seems to be taking an awfully long time and I don't know why they went with costumes as opposed to just adding it to your avatar, but... Well, um, uh, yeah. I mean, it would probably be a little bit more performant if it were an avatar as opposed to a costume, but I don't know. Maybe maybe not. Uh, it's really hard to say. And I am pulling up the reference for the next 
story here on my phone. That's why I'm looking down because um, the this computer is a little bit slow, so I'm I want to pull it up on my phone instead of the, the, the computer. All right, virtual Doritos. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh, okay. um, so basically, Doritos did a campaign where they made um, in the Philippines there was a VR game and a programmatic ad plus a grand prize of the PlayStation Five um, for Doritos, um, and it was let's see. Uh, Verizon Media's branded content division Riot Studio worked with Doritos to to launch a custom-made virtual AR game, Doritos Quest, localized for the Philippines. Mm -hmm. It uses the augmented reality and blockchain technology, and it features what they called avatoms, which are virtual objects players can interact with. They ran through the month of April, and they had to hunt for Doritos chip shaped to match the four iconic symbols found on a PlayStation controller and placed into virtual Doritos packs. Um, there were 4,000 prizes. Players had to collect all four chips, and an instant win redemption cards were a chance to win. Um, and... They also tapped local gaming influencers to help them promote the game. <laughs> and uh, it had more than 19,000 registered gamers. So the campaign exceeded the, uh, the target the click review and all that on the ads by almost 10% before the early close of registrations. <laughs> so, okay. And Evidently, it reached more than, or yeah, more than fifteen percent of the country's internet users. That's, that's a lot of people. <laughs> so it was a very successful AR, basically ad campaign, <laughs> turned into a game. <laughs> yeah, I, I wonder which one we'll see here. You know, it's going to be McDonald's or Wendy's and catch the chicken sandwich, or the Colonel <laughs> has to. Wendy's with the beef Wendy. AR. Ooh, um, <laughs> uh, that that could go several different ways. Um, <laughs> angry birds, um, but anyway, <laughs> no, I um, yeah, you know, now that now that Pokemon Go became the definitive augmented reality game platform which everybody is going to merge between that and Angry Birds right. and create a hundred games that are some version of that. You know, it's going to yeah. be like when Pac-Man first came out for Atari and the next hundred games that came out were all a version of a maze with something eating these other things that ran away from right. it. Right. So, you know, I just hope that they don't get locked into that. Right. Meanwhile, last week, I believe, we mentioned um, Shonda Rhimes and Netflix and Bridgerton. Well, <clears throat> a couple know. days ago, we found out that Netflix hired Mike Verdu, formerly of Oculus. All right, there, there's no <laughs> joke. Facebook. You know, right, right. Yeah. Netflix, Netflix is going to be doing games, and it looks like they're going to be doing VR as well. They have both of them now in their code. Yeah. <laughs> you know, VR and gaming are both in their code. So yes, yeah. they're I think they figured out that this is a good way to go. Yeah. So that's kind of confirmation that they are going AR and VR, yes. Yeah, there's there seems to be very little doubt at this point. Yeah. Especially so. now that they have the five K lenses, which everybody is gonna be using and Apple just came out with their Z form lens, which means that They'll be copied by a hundred other companies by the right. time. Ready. And Lynx looks really pretty cool. The headset, which is going to be the next probably competitor for the Quest 2 right. position. Right. Um, there's a lot going on right now. Really yeah. a lot. Uh, yeah. But the big thing is still the library. 
you know, yeah. that, that clicking is pretty. But anyway, that and the Steam Deck is very interesting. Oh that's, yeah, that. Oh no, that's just wow. That's, that's, that's coming up, but, but yeah. Um, <clears throat> before we get there, however, let's talk about so Facebook completing the brain computer interface partnership that they had with. Um, I forget the name of the lab, but they had a partnership with a research lab, basically, where they were like a consulting partner in the research. They weren't directly involved. They didn't do any data collection or, or whatever, but they were helping provide technology and to training and funding so that they could integrate machine learning and whatnot into making this work and it culminated with them um, being able to have a severely speech impaired man who couldn't speak because of a stroke uh, be able to just by intending to speak have the words appear on a screen so they popped a question on the screen to him how are you doing today or whatever and a second later i'm doing quite well thank you you know and that's actually what he meant to, to say so uh, and it's using machine learning to be able to recognize which impulses mean what and all that and is also using a uh, predictive text that's been around for ages and in, it doesn't well, work for a in, lot of different smartphones. In texting, you know, <laughs> uh, to, um, to fill in the blanks and have it produce what, or it may not always be entirely exactly what they are intending word for word, but it should be right. it's, what, it's close. what they mean. In, in, it's closer in, to Siri than Google in its right. uh, ability right. to function so that's really impressive and i mean so, so, so facebook was you know kind of tangentially in that because they were a consulting they weren't directly in it but the same announcement said that so facebook is now going to so focus more on the nearer and or nearer term and faster to market risk based Electromyography stuff, okay. uh, which will enable AR and VR controllers that use intent of what we want to do with the muscles to provide enhanced and very futuristic AR and VR controllers. Which is fantastic. Yeah, they're called hands, and you won't need any controllers anymore if they right. use this right. Right. So. And I've seen a lot of other places saying, Facebook sunsets head worn BC, BCI research. I'm like, no, no, they didn't. <laughs> well, that you is are the sensationalizing the announcement. I know, I know. I, well, I think it's what they did was that Facebook wanted to use it predictively in VR and AR. It's not going there yet. It's going to be used, like you're saying, for the head much more. So that's probably not going to, to go there yet. No, but I guarantee you that Facebook got learnings out of that that they can apply to the near-term risk. Oh, stuff. absolutely. That's yeah. and that was one of their goals in going into this partnership with the Headworn was to take learnings from that to apply to the risk. Right, and who, you know, there's no saying that they won't be utilizing the rest of this later on. Well, you know, yeah, so. yeah. I mean, this was just the the uh, culmination of this partnership. It had an end date, which was successful completion of translating someone's thoughts into words. Right. They did that. You know, th that does not mean that they are not giving going it up to, and never going back to right. do more. <laughs> <laughs> just because we got to the moon, we didn't stop launching rockets. I understand. Right. So, you know, but yeah, it, 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 sorry, it was so, kind of bugging me that they were. Yeah, I could tell. They are sunsetting. They are ending. They are giving up. Uh -uh. I'm like, no, they're, they're not. 
Uh, it must have been an upload or something because there are usually yeah it, uh, upload had an article worded that way I think Road to the R had an article worded that way I mean, they're, they're getting to be the same place now Road to VR and Upload I think they're just copying each other's <laughs> either that or it's the same guy writing the articles for both and... maybe <laughs> it's the algorithm. Road to the R doesn't change their headlines as often as that road does. No, I don't no, remember on the, the same article. The one time where every 10 minutes there was a new headline for the same article. It drives me crazy. I know. I hate that. It's like, <laughs> I think I'm going to be reading something new. It's like, I just read this. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, speaking of people copying Pokemon Go. Ordnance Survey in the UK is making a geolocation AR game. Mm. Ordnance Survey is the big the geo mapping and all that, and they're already using AR to, to, to an extent, but now they're making a geolocation AR game. So, but these games are not going to become. We don't have a lot of details on it yet, but it's probably going to be Pokemon Go like it's not necessarily going to be catching monsters or whatever but you know it, oh you know. yeah wrestling them on the ground in you know this, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's going to go over big or running into traffic to capture them I mean I, I'm yeah. not really sure where they're portal! Gonna... <laughs> right a portal that, that no, appears portal. On... oh portal. Squirtle. I'm, I'm yeah. thinking portal in the early days of the Pokemon Go if someone went there's a squirrel outside of town. Everyone would go, oh! <laughs> <laughs> and there were jokes about, you know, someone would get a notification while they were in a shower and they'd just jump out of the shower and run out the front door. <laughs> it was almost that bad. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. In the early days. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it definitely... I think his fate, it hasn't faded out. That's the crazy part. They just keep making new versions and new skins. It's the yeah. same game. It's just new skins. So. Well, yeah. Well, I, I mean, honestly, to Pokemon Go is kind of just a reskinned Ingress. Mm-hmm. A, re-skinned, a reskinned Ingress. You know? Yes. But uh, Ingress was nowhere near as popular. And it's still going strong, too. Well, there's so few AR games out there right now, and really, like I said, even having the the Apple devices that give me more access to AR than Google, right. which is crazy, um, it's still, until I can put the thing on my face like a set of glasses. I know the form factor of having to go... You know, is still it gets in the way yep even with the ipad i mean it doesn't matter oh, even with the ipad no even with the iphone with the ipad it really gets in the way even with the iphone which is smaller it gets in the way no, right the whole, <laughs> the whole point is anything you have to hold in order to see something else is going to get in the way right you right. know bottom line so right so anyways on to abduction which is free on the epic store from the 15th to, I think, the 22nd. So basically a full week. It's free on the Epic Store. And it's worth downloading, I think. Um, if you were at all a fan of, of Myst and the puzzle games of that nature. Um, it, this is so into not holding your hand that there is a character that says he's not going to hold your hand. <laughs> it's, it, it is. <laughs> no, I, I mean that literally. It I literally know. has a line about I'm not going to hold your. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. I, know. I, I um I found it difficult when I played it several years ago. Um, I don't know if it was because I was tethered or because the game is so non hand holding that what to do next is not apparent at all. <laughs> it's just not well, uh once you find cw he tells you a task that you need to do which is turn on the power and you still need to explore around and to, 
to figure out how to how to open up another area in order to get to the area where you can turn on the power. Yeah. But I played it last night for the first time. I got the power turned back on because I so, so, so I figured out how to open up a certain area, which gave me access to another certain area. And I saw controls for the power. I saw that it needed fuel. I found a fuel station, so I got fuel to there. And then I turned on the power. <laughs> you know, and right. then I went back to CW, and you know, and he told me the the next big thing I need to do, which is uh, get rid of the red light machine. And I'm working on that right now. So we'll we'll be following your progress. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it it doesn't hold your hand, but it definitely, definitely, you can tell that it's a can and missed like game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it starts out with narration as you're following the light up a path and then you have a giant as the uh, gamer dude called it space acorn come and open up and transport you to the other world <laughs> it kind of looks like a space acorn slash pine cone you know it's yeah. bumpy like a pine cone but it's shaped kind of like an acorn so okay and then it opens up and transports you to another world, which is kind of like the Arizona desert. And plopped in the middle of it is a house with a white picket fence. And you no, know, like it was cut out of suburbia and lifted up and dropped in the middle of the desert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? was, and yeah. surrounding it all is a very alien looking landscape on the other side of a shield wall. Right. So, yeah, it's... and you start getting intimations that things are not right. Ooh. That things are wrong. Very wrong. Yes, and it's your job to try to figure it out and fix it. Right. So yeah, I remember. It was, uh, <laughs> if you want to give it a shot, like I said, I played it years ago. I don't remember loving it, but. I, like I said, it could have been because I was tethered. I might have just not been in a good mood. Whatever. It was right. disorienting, to yeah. say the least. It sounds like I made it farther than you did. Uh, yeah. Okay. You did. <laughs> <laughs> and this was without looking up a walkthrough or or, or anything like that. No, oh, no. When I, when I got it, there was no walkthrough. I got it like yeah. the day it came out, you know, so yeah. it was just yeah, like... Yeah, no. I mean, this, this came out early days, yeah. Early, early days. Yeah. And as I mentioned before, uh, is, is, is or Cayenne is working on Firmament, which is another game that they are probably going to be out next year, I think. I think they were hoping this year, but I don't think it's going to happen this year. I mean, know. you never know, but uh, they uh, it was in Kickstarter, and I backed it, so so I get updates every now and then. And it's looking to be, as usual for them, a very visually beautiful game. <laughs> yeah. They do that quite well, you know. And there will be a, a, a VR version and a flat version of it, and a I forget, but I think that Quest is one of their targets, but I'm not sure. I forget. But I know I know PC VR obviously is. So, and I'm looking forward to it. And that brings us to our last bit of news, which is Steam Deck. Bum, ba, bum. <laughs> that came out and everyone's like, I don't need it, I don't need it, I don't need it. Pre-order. <laughs> Well, because there's only five bucks to pre-order, so you still have time to agonize over whether or not you're going to buy it, because yeah. it comes in three different flavors, underpowered, good power, and really ridiculously overpowered. Um, and you're going to pay accordingly, you know, you're well, going to pay yeah. either I mean, Swiss pricing or 700 bucks at the top of the line. Yeah, and basically what it is, is it's like a switch 
kind of except as I don't think you can. Um, you may be able to um, hook it up to a ATV. I'm not really sure, you know, but it lets you run Steam games on a handheld device. Um, and I believe that it's running a version of Linux, not Windows, and is using ProtonDB, um, mm-hmm. judge of power at all. Um, so it probably will not be able to run really intensive things like they mm-hmm. have like Alex, mm-hmm. you know, and Valve has said it's not intended for VR. But there are quite a few people saying we're going to use it for VR anyways. <laughs> I and I don't understand how. To be very honest with you. Well, if it's got a, um, a, a port coming out that you can just plug your your headset into or something, I guess, or but if it's not or hack it because um, I believe it will. Um, I think people are. Are, uh, I think you can also load Windows onto it if you really want to, or you know, uh, other things. So you know, who knows? You know, if it's powerful enough for low-end VR, people are going to use it for that. You're going to see videos coming out of how to use Steam Deck for VR. Oh no, no, I, I understand. Put these steps. <laughs> right. First, buy the seven hundred dollar version. Yeah, <laughs> that'll be step one, yeah. <laughs> which I believe has an NVMe upgrade. You know, so I mean, it's like, right. But what good is that going to do you if the high end games won't play? Right. So, but yeah, there will be people using it because that's what people do. You know, people like to do the DIY. I'm going to use this in a way it wasn't really intended to. You know, people took cardboard headsets and made them into six degrees of freedom PC VR headsets. Well, you're talking that were a little bit janky. Oh yeah, but they did them. You know. Yeah, they did it. <laughs> I know. I, I I used a couple of them. I I remember it. And they, yeah, they were a little janky. They're yeah. not what we're used to. But these are going to look janky compared to our next gen. So right, right. So uh, some people that's what they enjoy doing. You know, whether it's janky or not, they enjoy fine overpay enjoy tinkering. For- Overpay yeah. for an underpowered piece of equipment that will not be able to run what it is you were running now on your 27 or 32 inch monitor that you're going to see the beautiful graphics. But it's more portable and you can bring the PC with you just by sticking it into your cargo pants. Or you could just put your laptop in your backpack and take that with you. You know, it's just an alternative. <laughs> so you actually have a screen that you could use, and it, you know, you, it's not going to talk about the the drift on the control. They're already talking about the drift. It hasn't been released yet, and they're already talking about. They hope the patch for the drift is. It's so it's not going to play the overpowered. Game. It's not going to play <laughs> the real Steam games that you wanted for, and it's already got a problem with the hardware and since valve is notoriously famous for only making top end stuff yeah so but yeah it's um i did not pre-order one no um, <laughs> i'm surprised you didn't <laughs> i i didn't i didn't uh, right now really uh, the war is on honestly if sony goes at this war full speed ahead if they, if they can get this PS5 and the next generation VR off the ground, yeah, which it looks like they're having some trouble with. Right, uh, they could take over. They could truly take over. I mean, oh well, yeah, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, we had Beta VHS wars, we had Microsoft Linux wars, we had PC Mac wars, now we have VR wars. Huh? Okay, like it. Well, I don't. I hate it. I always end up with a lot of the losers. A lot of the victims are buried in my closet, you know. So, <laughs> even some of the winners, but 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens with the next generation. But I'm glad to see there are other companies that are interested enough and realize that I think they said literally 75% of all money being spent on tech development right now is geared towards VR and AR. Really? That's a lot. It's a lot, you know, considering it's dead. It's I know, right? <laughs> and considering it's just some people just want it to be dead because Facebook is in it. Yeah, well, uh, they haven't made too many friends. Uh, there was that guy on Twitter just fairly recently saying, VR game devs, please stop. You're just hurting people because you're helping Facebook, which hurts people. My family. And I'm like, dude. I know. I know, I know, I, I know. I get you had something bad happen to you, but that you, you really want everyone else to get hurt because to spite the, the company that you're blaming for what bad thing happened. Some no. people, yeah, I know. It's it's. Look, the bottom line is right now there there is nothing to compare to the Quest Two price wise or performance wise, just nothing or library size or any of it. Yeah. yeah. So there's. Uh, the, I mean, that unfortunately or fortunately, depending on your point of view, that's true. Right. You know, I I mean, Facebook right now is what is keeping VR alive. Because if we're only Valve, if we we're only PlayStation VR, uh, I think it would have died. Well, that or if they were to leave it now because of how much advancement has been made in the field over the last mm -hmm. couple of years, I think that it might leave a void for a short period of time. But that sucking sound that you would hear would be all of the other right. you know, headsets that have been on waiting online right right yeah. at this point they could probably leave and the, the the vacuum would be filled yes but earlier on i think they're right. like they kept it alive absolutely up yeah. until now they're, it's the same way apple is keeping ar alive there there right. would be no ar if it wasn't for apple so right. I, you know even though google well, is in there yeah um, so they're they're all in there but bottom line is still apple ar Facebook VR, right, and Netflix alone of all. If Bezos doesn't buy them first, so you know it's. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, that brings us to the slightly rambling end of our podcast. <laughs> that was only slightly rambling. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. We need to work harder and do more rambling next time. Absolutely. Rambling and the rambling. So. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching. If you made it this far, if you didn't make it this far, how are you knowing what I am saying? Kidneys, man. Kidneys. <laughs> so, please like and subscribe and share with all your friends. And remember, as I promised in the beginning of the episode, I would probably uh, still use my knock him over the head, drag him to the keyboard, and press like and subscribe with the nose. So, do that. <laughs> and have a good weekend. Yeah. Well, what week? It's the end of the weekend now on when we are recording this, and it's going to go up today. So, same day. If I get it out of edited in time. So, have a good rest of your week. Let us know if you buy Yuki and what you think of it. Bye. Have fun. Bye.